Okay. So when was I firing the next shot? Habite returns, the gun goes off. That's the time limit for everyone. How you feel about it if you're D-class or you're a uh, national champion level guy. That's the goal. What we were just doing, think, think about that, that was predictive shooting. So you aimed once and you pressed the trigger twice. And with training and experience, we could predict where the shots were gonna go. Here's, the, here's a good example. So how far away could you get and still be you know, ripping as fast as you could pull the trigger? It depends on your experience, your equipment, right? We've got one guy shooting a compact carry gun. We've got some people shooting heavy competition with an open gun here. No, you could probably have backed up further and be very comfortable, boom, boom, and you know that the gun's gonna be returning. You know, and guys shooting like carry guns or duty ammo somewhere somewhere in the middle. When you learn how the gun's gonna behave shooting aggressively like that, okay? Now we're switching gears to reactive shooting. What that means is I react to every sight picture. And the way to think about the sight, if you're shooting a dot, it's like a bouncing ball. As soon as it returns, I'm pressing the trigger, whether it's the front sight or your dot. Uh, the wrong way to do this would be like, think about what we did with the, with the group shooting, where you shoot, your sights come back down, then you look at it, you're like, yep, looks good. I guess I'll start, we're not doing that. So think about using this in the context of USPSA shooting. You want high accountability, but think about if there's a, a head box at 15 or 20 yards, or there's a tight partial target or a tuxedo, you're probably gonna be like, a tuxedo at 25 yards? You wouldn't be like, all aim once, be like, wop, wop. I'll be like, well, hope I hit it. Like, nobody do that, right? Well, <laughs> well somebody <laughs> wild man, might do that. That would not be something I'd recommend. So when you're shooting that head box, you would press the trigger, the sight lifts, it comes back down, you see the sight a second time, and then you press the trigger. So I'm reacting to each sight picture, and I have a high amount of accountability for where the bullets are going. Okay? Uh, I'm gonna shoot again and do some, uh, do a just a, kinda like what we did earlier with the measurement drill. I'm gonna shoot one shot, let the gun return, and I'm gonna shoot. Okay, so with this light plastic gun, the gun recoiled from there up to the neckline. So, oh, can move up a little bit, please, sir? So from all the way back here with this light plastic gun, how much do you think this amount of movement takes? How much muscle? How about basically none? Right? And think about what we did back there, the drill where we had you, like how much pressure you put into the gun and how much it took to return. This sounds really crazy, but I want you to actually return the guns just with your eyes. So all I'm gonna do is just stay staring at the point I wanna hit and let the sight just come back there. I don't have to like push into it or shove into it or do any kind of magic. So all I'm doing here is just standing here trying to be cool, shooting six shots and I just keep staring at the point I wanna hit and by looking at that point, the sight will just keep returning to where I want. I don't have to put any extra force. Bad things that could happen if I shift my vision onto my sight is it'll just start recoiling and as long as I see brown target behind it, like who knows where it'll go, it'll just go off into the wilderness. So we'll be talking about it a lot. The power of your vision is really important and you're gonna hit where you look, which we'll, we'll continue to expand on. So it's really important that I stay looking at the target, the target's clear in my vision in my dot or my, you know, your rear side or front side, all that's blurry. Cause I'm looking at where I want to hit, not watching my dot and seeing wherever it goes in recoil. I'll make a couple bad examples for you. I'm very good at that. You're good at that. <laughs> all right, so you can tell me what I do wrong, if you don't mind. Happy to do that then. Hey, what did I do dot. wrong? Watching the dot. Yeah, and this is going to be super common. I'm looking at that white spot. The gun comes up. I see red. I see red on white. My folk. Now, the reason the shots track up is because the target becomes blurry behind the gun, and I fire the shot and I see the dot. Yeah, it's I see red on brown. Like I'm good, right? Boom! Fire that shot. Red comes back, red on brown, and I'm, yep, I'm good. And what happens is over time, these shots kind of work their way up because I'm not referencing back to this aim point. Huh. I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing brown behind red. If you see shots start getting thrown up high, you, you should start getting suspicious. Like, hey, I'm looking at my red dot, All right? And I'll, I'll do another bad example for you. Always count on Ben for a bad example <laughs> with life advice and shooting <laughs> and haircuts. Pretty obvious what's going on there, right? And it's where my whole hand 
takes okay now that example here right, what was wrong with that very nice. Over that's confirmation. Just, that's too yeah. slow. We're not. So that, that they're not getting the result they want. So then they'll shoot, and they, I'll see the site come back, and then the site's just sitting there, kind of doing nothing. Then I press that shot off. Like we don't want that. Like Joel said, we want that bouncy ball. It's like tick, 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 tick. the site's just going to stay in motion, and we're going to try to shoot that aggressive pace. You're still going to be react. Have time. You're going to react to what you're seeing, but we want it to be very immediate. Everything happening immediately. Okay. One thing we've continued to talk about is where you put your focus or kind of where your attention goes. When you do this drill, I think it's really, really good to put your attention on your firing hand. Then you can like just press the gun straight. Don't push into the gun. So the feeling in your hands, just like the previous drill, it's not like there's a perfect score or if you have one that's down, be like, you know, hey, what happened on this one? You'd be like, oh yeah, I feel that feeling in my hand. I can tell I'm doing that. That's what we're going for. So it's not like if you have a, a Charlie or a bad person or something, we're just... Like the whole goal is learning. This drill and the previous drill, there's not like there's a perfect score. Regardless of what you get, it's gonna be like, all right, either you fix something or you go faster. Okay? All right, Ben, anything else? All right.